loving God, we thank you for your presence here. As we meditate upon your living word, we humbly ask you to speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated now. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, once again, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in this worship service. Today, I would like to share with you a few thoughts from the first lesson that was read to us today. <clears throat> I've just given the topic, they fell and we fall. Last week, someone asked the other person, what was the topic that the pastor is going to speak on coming Sunday? He said, something like they fall, I fall. <laughs> and the other person said, what is this riddle like <laughs> topic? <laughs> no, this, I just wanted to share with you, <clears throat> they refers to Adam and Eve. Yes, they fell. They fell from the glory that God has given them. They fell from the higher status in which God has placed them. Now, that's not the end of the story. Now, their act is being replicated in so many ways in this world continuously. They fell, that's not the end, but we also fall. When I say we, I do not just mean those who are gathered here. I am including the whole humanity. We continue to fall. So we have to take care of ourselves and we should know how we should not fall sin, fall into sin. So as I reflect on this passage, of course we are going to think about the way in which sin entered into this world, how Adam and Eve committed sin by disobeying God, and what are the consequences. When I share this, I want you to bear in mind, I'm not here to teach you about sin. Once a pastor <clears throat> took a theme, seven deadly sins in the Lenten season. So he meditated upon the seven deadly sins thoroughly on seven Wednesdays. And at the end of the series of sermon, a woman came and appreciated the pastor. Pastor, thank you for the very informative sermons. We learn so many ways in which we can commit sin. I never knew that we can commit sin in different ways. <laughs> See. Whenever we think about sin, we are not here to learn about sin. How to take warning from that particular story. Now, with regard to our Christian understanding of sin, or the fallenness of humanity, we know from the scripture that sin is an interlude. It is not, it was not there from the beginning, as some religious community think. They think human being was all the time were in sin from the beginning. They continue to remain in sin, even if you take another birth, according to them. Another birth, you will be a sinful person. But scripture is very, very clear that sin is an interlude. It has come in between. Originally, God created us in a perfect way. When he said, he saw everything that he has created, he said everything was good. Good, good, good. Yes, we were once in a perfect way. We had a perfect life. We had a glorious life. And it was a God-given glory. But sin entered into this world. We received the consequences. Because of the sin, diseases 
entered into this world. Death entered into this world. Enmity entered into this world. The sinful nature corrupted the souls of people. So we should always bear in mind it's an interlude. Now, we have a good news also, which the other religious community do not have. In one particular religion, they say, okay, you, are, you commit sin, you are born, the next life, you again commit sin. At the most, you can be on the top like a Brahmin, that's all. Even in the Brahmins, they commit sin. So you commit sin again and again, you are reborn as a sinful person or any other creature. In another religious community, there is no forgiveness of sin at all. If at all God has mercy, I don't want to mention the name of the God, He may have mercy and He may forgive you. But there is no sure way of receiving forgiveness and be assured of your forgiveness from God. The only religious community that deals quietly with the sinful nature of human being is Christianity. So be assured of that. Now, the second thing is that when the scripture talks about sinfulness that entered into this world, it always says it has come from outside. Whether you take Genesis chapter 3 or Isaiah chapter 14 or Ezekiel chapter 28 or the book of Job or Matthew chapter 4. In all these passages, the scripture is very clear. It has entered into this world from outside. There is a third party, third person who brings sinfulness into this world. Scripture is very clear about it. Even when we say the Lord's Prayer, see, sometimes we um, say, as we have in the Bible, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. But originality, the text says, deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. Now, the modern translation in Tamil Bible, which is we call Thiruvivilliam. There, they have translated it very clearly. Thiyonidam irundu yengalai viduviyum. Thiyon. It's not just evil, evil one. Jesus acknowledged the presence of evil one. We call him Satan or devil, evil spirits. So we know there is one arch enemy and he has host of evil spirits. Scripture is very clear about it. There is no doubt about it. Even though many times scholars say that Isaiah 14, Lucifer, doesn't refer to Satan or Ezekiel chapter 28. It refers to Adam. But these passages are very clear that there is another party, the third party, that instigates people. As we wrote, read these passages, we come to know the real nature of Satan or the devil and what he will do in our personal life. Now, I would like to share a few thoughts on how this, they committed sin, how the temptation was strengthened, and what exactly is the nature of sin, and what are the consequences of sin. So, if you like, you can take the passage, Genesis chapter 3. Now, the serpent we see a speaking serpent. Can a serpent speak? It can, we, someone can make it speak. As we did in Numbers chapter 22, where we come to know that donkey spoke. Donkey spoke to Balaam. We know that. And here we see the serpent speaking. 
now the comment that is given in the scripture is as the serpent was more crafty deceiver cheater in what way first he pretended to do something good to adam and eve whenever i say eve it includes adam also because the scripture says when eve ate she gave it to adam who was with her many time people think that uh, satan tempted her when she was alone the scripture is not very clear about it she ate and gave it to adam who was with her so he was also able to hear the conversation that went between satan and eve the craftiness came out from the very words of the serpent it said did god was one did god actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden he tried to show that it is taking pity on them it sounded as if that serpent was very much concerned about the about adam and eve and he pretended that that he was trying to do something good to adam and eve see what is this you are not eating anything did god say you should not eat any of the trees that was not the command of god that was not the instruction so the craftiness came out in the by in the fact that satan tries to replace the word of god with something else and it always tries to come into your life by pretending that he is trying to do something good what is this you are not enjoying this world did really god say you should not enjoy this world so he pretends to do something good then what happens we know that eve repeated what god said but she did not simply repeat it by her verbatim she added something look at what eve has said no 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 god said you can eat all the trees from the trees in the midst of the garden but he said you shall not eat the fruit of the th- tree that is in the midst of the garden neither shall you touch it god didn't say that god didn't say that so the craftiness of satan comes into your life in the form of adding something to god's word god's word is there god's command is clearly there but sometimes people add to it so that you can falsify the word of god as well as what you have said okay for example during the time of jesus christ <clears throat> God gave the command to observe sabbath that is the day of the lord now jesus did not oppose that he also observed sabbath he went to the synagogue on every sabbath but he was against all the other rules that people have added for example they said a doctor should not do his work on sunday for them is saturday you should not get healed on sabbath day your doctor should not treat the patient and jesus was against it no so whenever people added something to the command of god jesus was against it and satan was doing it he was doing that another let me give you another example god said honor your father and mother and they said no the amount that we have to give to our parents can be given to god that was not there in the scripture 
But the priest said, no, 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 you, you support your parents with uh, monthly uh, some, uh, income g- given to them. But if you want to give it in, to the Lord, put it at an offering, God will accept it. You don't have to give it to your parents. Jesus was against that. So the craftiness of Satan is that he will add something. People come and sin when people add something to the word of God. We should not do that. The third one is that the Satan was trying to make God a liar. Did God say that you will die? No, 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 you will not die. Even though God said you will surely die. You will surely die. And Satan says, no, no, you will not surely die. But the tricky part is that <clears throat> from the even we come to know that the Satan was telling the truth. They did not die. They did not lie. And he said, you will be like God. You will be like God. Even that was not a false one. Because in verse 22, in the same chapter, we come to know that God saying, what is this? Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit and they have become one like us. One like us. So even in that point, Satan was telling something true. Okay. Then the third one is that he clearly said, you will know good and evil. Again, that was true. They came to know about good and evil. Now, what he did was that he told the truth, but he told the half-truth. He did not say the complete truth. He did not Tell them about the consequences that they are going to have after eating the fruit. For example, they knew about good and evil. God also knew about good and evil. What is the difference between knowing good and evil by God and by us? The basic difference is that God knows good and evil but he will not do evil things. Whereas human beings, we come to know about good and evil, but we don't have the power to resist evil. That's why Jesus came into this world to give us power to resist evil. Adam and Eve, Cain, Abel, even in the life, we know They know about what is wrong and what is not wrong. But they did not choose what is not wrong. They started deliberately commit sin because they wanted to do evil things. So the Satan gave the half-truth and didn't tell them, okay, you will know the truth, but you won't have the power to receive the evil. Now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we reflect on this, we know that this world is full of evil things. People know about evil things and deliberately do it. They willfully do it. Now, as we see another nature of sin is that when Eve ate that, he gave it to Adam also. Sin seeks company. When people commit sin, they will pull other people also. How many people have have, uh, started doing bad things because the friends started doing it, because of the friends' influence, Now we know this is another nature of sin. That is, it seeks company. We know the proliferation of sin in this world. It's not just one person committing sin. 
He tries to propagate his sin through movies, through novels, through internet, through YouTube and so many other things. They pull people into sin. That is not the nature of Satan or devil. And people simply follow it. He wants others to pull in. Yes, he tried to pull in Jesus also. We all know that. So we have to be very, very careful in that. Now another thing that comes out of this passage is that when people get caught, they try to blame other people. This is another nature of sin. When you are get caught, or when you come to know that you have committed sin, you always try to give excuses. Many times people don't accept they have committed sin. And they try to justify what they have done. Oh, this is my weakness. Take for example, <clears throat> nowadays this has become another trend. Even with regard to the serial killers, they take the scan, brain scan, and say in the court, in the legal court, Your Honor, this, his brain is made up in such a way that he is involved in the serial killer, killing. So you cannot blame him, you cannot punish him. That's terribly bad, that's terribly bad. Yes, his brain is made up in such a way, not because his nature by birth. Yes, he has the original sin that is there, but because of his acts, his brain has become in such a way, it is like that. In other words, what, we are, what I am trying to share with you is that even though there is original sin, we are sinners, we are prone to commit sin, there is always a responsibility. You are responsible for your sin. When uh, God asked Adam, where are you? Why are you hiding? Did you eat the fruit? You know what he said? Let me put it in Tamil. Isn't it? You're the woman that you gave. So Adam accused God himself. He accused Eve also. When God asked Eve, he said, no, the serpent. So you pass on the buck on somebody else. Don't do that. When you commit sin, you are not expected to hide it from the Lord. Anyway, God knows it. Confess your sin. Receive the forgiveness. That is the right way. Then the basic or the prime consequence of committing sin is that breaking relationship with God. Adam and Eve, they started hiding from the presence of God. Now we know that Jesus came into this world to reconcile us, to renew our relationship with God. By committing sin, people ran away from the presence of God and they ran away from God. They thought God was an enemy. Even now, people think God as an enemy. You know why? He is not allowing them to commit sin. He is not allowing them to enjoy sin. He says that's wrong. Say so they don't want God. They don't want to hear the voice of God. They don't want God to point out the sinfulness. They are like just like the pigs in the gutter water, enjoying the smell and the chillness. But Christians are called to run away from sinful places and from sin. Because we want to have good relationship with 
our creator then another thing of the sin the another nature of the sin is that they try to think of some remedy for the damage without the help of god they were trying to use fig leaves to cover that nakedness that is they didn't seek the help of god they try to patch up their own thing they try to cover the sin and they pretend that they are not sinful and they did not commit sin the first thing for salvation is that you should accept that you have committed sin we have sinful nature we know that but the lord wants us to confess our sins know our sinful acts and confess them receive forgiveness so dear brothers and sisters in christ by meditating on this ch- ch- chapter genesis chapter 3 we come to know of the nature of sin how satan will craftily enter into our life and motivate us pressurize us force us to commit sin we come to know we learn about this because the lord is warning us through this beautiful passage the lord wants us to be very careful with regard to the craftiness of satan now the good news is that god reversed the whole thing through jesus christ anana sent me a link about a preaching a bible study on the comparison of what happened in the beginning of the scripture that is in genesis and what happened happen, what will happen in future which is given in the end of the scripture that is in the book of revelation there's a beautiful comparison what happened and what will happen so as christian we are called to hold on to both we hold on to the beginning of the entering into sin because we have to be very very careful because the same satan is still now working in this world working in this world till now the day will come of course there will be a war a michael or the michael will wage war against satan and he will bound satan and he will put him in dungeon but till then he is very much active and alive and active so we have to be very very careful so we receive warning through the initial chapters of the scripture but we also have the good news the day will come satan will be conquered he will be bound even now he is a defeated enemy we should all know that jesus has conquered him and he shares the victory over satan with us too never never forget that and through jesus we receive the forgiveness of sin through jesus we our relationship with god is renewed everything is a reversal of what happened in the garden of eden and the third one that i would like to place before you is that jesus has formed a group formed a chosen community that will do god's will and get involved in righteous actions so that we could prepare the way for the lord so what i'm trying to say is that we are in between the beginning of the scripture and the end of the scripture what happened in the garden of eden what is going to happen in heaven or in god's kingdom and we are in between we have to be warned we have to resist the devil at the same time we should also looking forward to the day when god is going to make us sinless people completely holy people that is called glorification and we look forward to that and we move towards that 
so in this world we do god's will and seek the kingdom and do righteous things that god wants us to do so that we can prepare ourselves and other people for the coming of the lord now the story that started in the beginning of the scripture in the garden of eden will finally end through the establishment of kingdom of god on this earth by jesus christ so we have a good news we are fighting a winning war winning for us through the help of jesus christ let's keep a moment of silence let us thank god for having a plan for reversing what happened in the garden of eden we thank god let's thank god for the lesson that we learn how about the craftiness of satan even now in many people's life he pretend to do something good and make them sin commit sin he makes sin sin as something desirable something enjoyable something most glamorous people fall for this craftiness of satan even now satan makes god liar even now people add something to god's word and fall into the trap dear lord help us to be very careful with regard to the craftiness of satan or the devil but thank you for giving us the good news that he is a defeated enemy we can conquer him in the name of jesus with the power of the holy spirit lord help us to lead a holy people thank you for giving your forgiveness thank you for renewing our relationship with god yes we are reconciled with god oh lord we commit ourselves once again to do your will and seek the kingdom and your righteousness lord help us always to remember that your day will come you will establish your kingdom on earth and the devil will be bound and you are going to make us sinless people holy people we thank you for that oh lord help us to march towards that help us not to lose heart because we have committed one sin or the other we know all have sin but at the same time you are purifying us every day you are forgiving our, our sins every day and making us pure and holy and you are sanctifying us we know that we will help us always to remember one day you are going to glorify us we are going to have the glory that adam had before he fell o oh lord we once again commit ourselves in your loving hands thank you for the good news help us to hold on to your truth and obey you so that we will continue to be your children preparing our ways for the coming of the lord In Jesus name we pray amen